if you're watching this, it means it's the year 2019. Groovy. So if you're watching this on your big wall TV with your flying car out in the garage, that means it's 40 years in the future for me. That's pretty wild. So you found the, the tape. I buried a tape in a time capsule and you dug it up. That's really cool. So I'm making this to document what life is like for us fans of Japanese anime back here in 1979. And I hope you found this useful. So here's what is going on right now. Some of the shows I'm watching in July of 1979. Um, starting off with Ultraman, right? Like Ultraman is a classic, modern classic. It's everyone has seen the TV show and the movies and all that stuff. And the uh, the anime series, it's 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 classic Ultraman. It's just like the show, just like the movies. Um, it is a thing. And you know, while I like it, I gotta admit it is aimed slightly at the more kiddie crowd. You know, now that we're getting some some more interesting stuff, some stuff like Yamato and, and Galaxy Express, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, like, I'm, I'm really enjoying Ultraman, but it's definitely that, like, episodic thing, right? Where it's just, you know, the, the guys show up and there's a, a thing going on and uh, then Ultraman shows up to save the day at the end, just in the nick of time. And, you know, it's fun, but it's kind of formulaic. So, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm liking it. It's not a bad show at all. Also, like, the, uh, the, the animation's a little, little, um, it's not bad, but it's not, like, the greatest out there right now, you know? So, um, I'm enjoying it, but I give it kind of a, you know, um, high middle kind of a thing out of, uh, you know, out of all the shows right now. Uh, also watching Captain Future, really enjoying that one. Uh, we just finished up the, um, the movie thing not that there's not like a captain future movie but like they're um in the show the story they do these four episode stories and like there's a captain future movie in the show which really like freaks me out man and so captain future has to like play captain future in the movie but in disguise so it's really funky and um i i liked that it was a little more you know uh Classic sci-fi mixed with some uh, some weird stuff with the storyline, but really kind of out there, which which was cool. Um, and the ending was like classic, classic sci-fi, like '50s sci-fi. Um, so like it had its its weirdnesses, but also its really cool things. And then we started a new storyline recently, and uh, Captain Future is one of those things where you know if you like that that that. Uh, that sci-fi stuff from like the the pulps, the astounding science fiction, that kind of thing. Captain Future is right down your alley. It's it's aimed for you know slightly younger audience, but there's some dark moments. There's some serious stuff in there a little bit. Um, so you know it's not going to be quite as dark as some of the other other stuff out there. It's not Yamato or anything, but it's got some some cool elements to it. Uh, I like the characters. You got to get over this kind of goofiness of the character designs. But, you know, I like it. The animation's kind of so-so, but it's pretty cool. Um, you know, again, it's, it's definitely aimed more at that, that, uh, that sci-fi fan, the, 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 the rockets, you know, ray gun kind of a thing. Um, also, Galaxy Express 3.9s, man, this show. So I know there's been a little controversy out there about Galaxy Express 3.9s in that a lot of people really love it and a few folks just kind of can't get into it, but... Galaxy Express, okay, I'll admit, it is, it's brilliant a lot of the times, but it is kind of, there are some episodes that kind of work better than others, and I think partly because it is so episodic, there are some two-parters in there too, but it's, it's really, you know, some episodes will hit you and some won't, it's like the Twilight Zone, right, where some things, you know, really work and some things just kind of don't, but it's more personal preference, I think. Um, it is cool having a sort of space western vibe to it. And now that we're kind of deep into the show, you're getting to see some, some variety, some, um, sometimes the writers are clearly kind of uh, stretching for things and, and kind of trying out some wild ideas, which is pretty cool. Um, I also like the kind of opera themes to it sometimes. Feels kind of like Wagner at times. 
So, like, I, I think Galaxy Express is, is pretty cool. But, you know, again, kind of to your taste. Um, but definitely, you know, if you're not certain about Galaxy Express, give it a try. Check it out. The character designs are very funky, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's Leiji Matsumoto. We all, we all know the guy. So, you know, you just got to kind of get used to that character design style. It just is a thing. Um, let's see here. What else? Um, oh, two other big things. So there's, there's Anne of Green Gables which, you know, it's World Masterpiece Theater, right? Like, everybody watches these things. Um, you just kind of have to watch the World Masterpiece Theater things. But Anne of Green Gables, my gosh, this, this is such an amazing show. And not, you know, you know, some folks just don't like the stuff that's only for kids, but really, Anne is just fantastic. Um, there's really no other word for it. Like, it's... It's very carefully like structured. It's telling the story of the books, but much more closely. Like it's not just you know the first couple episodes start the book and the last couple episodes. You know, I'm I'm assuming you know in a lot of these these shows it kind of starts the the book and then it ends the book and the middle is kind of filler or other adventures and stuff. But no, this is really diving deep into the story and giving us all of that story and just all of what we'd expect out of that that story. It's really cool. And I don't know. I just think it's um, it's really impressive. There's a there's a naturalness to Anne, right? Like it it feels real. Like yeah, you know the you know, we all love the sci-fi stuff and how that can that can really hit us hard with some of its themes and how it expresses things. But sometimes you want to show that just about normal people going about their normal lives and just kind of experiencing that kind of a slice of life thing, right? Um, so, you know, I'm really enjoying it. Maybe we'll get some more slice of life anime in the future. That would be kind of nice. Um, but Anne of Green Gables is just, it's, it is amazing. It really is amazing. It's taken me a little while to get into it. I just wasn't sure. But now that I'm watching it, dang, this show. Um, it's directed by this guy named Isao Takahata. The layouts, I was reading this up, uh, up on this, uh, layouts by a guy named, uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Um, I hope these guys work together in the future. Like, they're, they're, there's something there to those guys. I think mean, they, they make a good team. They, they should do more stuff together. Um, but the other big one, which was, you know, this is the one everyone should be watching, is this show called Mobile Suit Gundam. It's science fiction, but it's serious, and, like, it's thoughtful. Like, I started watching it, and I was like, okay, this is a, a cool giant robot show, but it's not like any other giant robot show I've seen. Like... The mecha are like real, like like they're built by a military, by you know actual engineers. It's not just some random guy. And like you know, I love all the super robot stuff. Who doesn't? But they're really taking a realistic approach to this. It's more of a war story between two sides that both have mecha in the future. It's this war of independence. And I know a lot of people aren't watching it right now, but I think this is, it's really impressive, all the stuff they're doing with this show. Like, some of the bad guys I actually kind of sympathize with because they're presented as this really interesting people. Like, they have multiple sides to their personality. It's really weird. Like, the main character, this Amaro Ray kid, he doesn't even want to pilot. Like, it's just this thing he stumbles into, and he kind of is feeling this responsibility, but he's... You know, it's this big stress because he's in a freaking war. It's amazing. So, like, I, I, this is a really, and they've done some really amazing things in recent episodes where, like, some of the, some, some people have started dying off. I mean, it's a war. You kind of expect that. But, like, characters you've been following suddenly... <laughs>